Today, we are looking at some of the most evil criminals in history, some of which managed to escape jail or avoid the FBI for years. Let's get right on into it. Starting off this countdown, we have the Hitchhiker's Killer. The Hitchhiker's Killer is the name given to serial killer Donald Henry Gaskins. He started his killings in 1969, where he would pick up hitchhikers to later kill them. It's believed that he killed more than a dozen people. But even before he went on this killing spree, Gaskins had a history of sick crimes. Finally, on November 14th of 1975, Gaskins was arrested after a man witnessed him killing two men and called the police. He was later sentenced to death, but this sentence turned into life imprisonment without any possibility of parole. However, his killings did not stop while behind bars. While in prison, he became the only man to have ever killed an inmate on death row. In our ninth spot today, we have Glenn Stark Chambers. In January of 1975, Glenn Stark Chambers got into a heated dispute with his girlfriend, Connie Weeks. It ended with him taking her life. As a result, he was sentenced to death by electric chair, later reduced to life imprisonment. However, Glenn escaped prison on July 13th. Glenn, with two other inmates, ganged up to attack their detention officer and then escaped through a window. Now, he was captured three days later, but only to escape several years later. So he worked with the prison to help build furniture. He came up with a good idea to put himself into one of the boxes and have himself carried out of prison in a transport truck, and it worked. Even after three decades, Glenn has never been found. If he was still alive today, he would would be in his 70s, so he could still be out there somewhere. In our eighth spot, we have Ted Bundy. Now, what was so scary about Ted Bundy is how smart he was. He was the definition of evil genius. So basically, he would use his smarts to manipulate women and then kill them. Bundy is said to be responsible for murdering 30 women, although it's thought that his number is much higher. Now, Bundy was actually able to escape custody multiple times. The first time, he jumped out of a second story building and fled while at the courthouse. He had planned this for days, practicing jumping from his top bed bunk in prison down to the floor to strengthen his ankles. Now, eventually he was caught, but then a while later he escaped again. This time he forced himself to lose weight in order to squeeze through a hole in his cell ceiling. When he did escape the second time, he went on to murder more women until being caught once again. In our seventh spot, we have Charles Manson. Infamous cult leader Charles Manson, who led the Manson family cult, had his followers commit crimes and murders on his behalf. Some of his members committed a series of nine murders in July and August of 1969. In 1971, Manson was convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder for the deaths of seven people, including film actress Sharon Tate. What's scary about Manson is that he was also an evil genius. If you've ever seen his interviews, he acts quite wild and strange. People think that he's out of his mind. At one point, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and paranoid delusion disorder, but some people think that he was just too smart for his own good and he was just faking all of this. In 1971, Manson received the death sentence, but a year later the government got rid of capital punishment, so his sentence was changed to life in prison instead. In our sixth spot, we have Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Between 1963 and 1965, Ian Brady and Myra Hindley worked together to torture, take advantage of, and kill a number of young individuals. What they did was incredibly messed up and it'll make your stomach churn. Now, these two were actually given the name the Moors Murderers because after taking the lives of their victims, they would bury their bodies on the Moors outside of Manchester. Both individuals were sentenced to life in prison for their crimes. Ian was actually placed in solitary confinement, whereas Myra died in prison in 2002. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Lester Eubanks. In 1965, Lester was convicted of taking the life of Mary Ellen Diener. As a result, he was given the death penalty, which later got changed to a life sentence. Now, over the years in prison, apparently Lester changed his ways and became very well behaved. In fact, on December 7th, 1973, they let him go out to Christmas shop for his family. While out in a mall, he managed to escape his guards and flee. To this day, he still hasn't been caught. He's out there somewhere in hiding. 
who knows where he fled to or what he's up to now. Coming in at number four, we have Robert William Fisher. Now, this guy is one of the FBI's most wanted fugitives. He is on the run after a triple homicide and arson. On April 9th, 2001, Fisher took the lives of his wife and two children before blowing up their house. It is still unclear as to why he did this, and he's been on the run ever since. And please have no leads. On April 20th, his car was found in a forest near Payson, Arizona, but Robert was nowhere to be found. On November 3rd, 2021, Fisher was removed from the FBI's most wanted fugitives list. But despite them doing this, he still remains a very wanted fugitive. In our third spot, we have Bradford Bishop. Bradford Bishop Jr. is a former United States Foreign Service officer who is now a wanted fugitive. On March 1st of 1976, Bishop started to spiral after not receiving receiving the promotion he really wanted. He then left his work early, drove to the bank, withdrew money, and then bought a sledgehammer, gas can, shovel, and pitchfork. He then returned home where he killed his wife, mother, and three sons. He then drove the bodies several miles away before burying them in a wooded swamp area before setting them on fire. As a result, he was placed on the FBI's list of 10 most wanted fugitives. They have no clue as to where Bishop is now. He could be anywhere, but they do believe that he fled to Europe. Moving on to number two, we have Arthur Hutchinson. Arthur Hutchinson has lived a life of crime for murder, attempted murder, theft, and burglary. In fact, he spent five years in prison for the attempted murder of his half-brother. In September of 1983, he was brought into a police station after being arrested for theft. While there, he asked to go to the bathroom and then proceeded to jump out of the bathroom window and fled. He was on the run for three and a half weeks. While on the run, he crashed a wedding and murdered the bride's father, mother, and brother. Later that day, he broke into another person's home and stabbed all three of the residents to death. He was finally caught on November 5th of 1983 and sentenced to life imprisonment. And in our number one spot today, we have Ahmed Suraji. From 1986 to 1997, Ahmed took the lives of 42 females. The bodies of his victims were found in a sugarcane field. What he would do was after killing them, he would bury them waist deep in his field with their heads facing his house. He believed that by doing so, this gave him great power. But he was later caught and arrested alongside his sisters and three wives who helped him. One of his wives was actually actually sentenced to death, but that was later changed to life imprisonment. Ahmed, on the other hand, was sentenced to death by a firing squad in 2008. All right, guys, it was a pretty heavy video, not gonna lie, but if you wanna see part three, I can do that for you. Just smash that like button and comment something down below. Speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 strange times, people saw their souls depart. David Samet commented, my family saw our mom go out of her body when she died. A lot of people commented that they've seen people's souls come out of their body when they pass away. It's really weird and scary, but does that mean that our souls live on after death? There's just so much that we don't know. It's crazy. Psychic friend Fred Bear commented, I've had many outer body experiences, but for me, it's more astral projection. So I have a friend that can astral project and like he says it's interesting, but also terrifying. And it's like, I want to try it for myself, but also I'm terrified and I don't want to do it. So if anyone has astral projection stories, just let me know in the comments below. And Caitlin Rafferty commented, you should see happy tree friends. Yes, when I was younger, uh, I was on YouTube and I was like, oh my God, this is a cute little blue bunny or whatever. Like, this is so cute. And then all of a sudden it got very dark and graphic and bloody. And I was like, what is this? You know, same with that video game, Dumb Ways to Die. Horrifying, and kids played it. Anyway, all right guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya. Bye.